Hey everyone, what is up? So I just got some great news from the hacking community for anyone that's interested in unlocking their full potential of their PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV system. Now, of course, this is not this is not Sony approved, so of course, use at your own risk. But basically, this hack is super easy to install. It'll work on the latest file, uh, latest system software, 3.60 and it'll basically give you access to your file system which means you can install homebrew software like emulators or you can apply the uh, whitelist playstation tv hack that allows you to play the games that were locked out of the system anyway i'm just going to show you guys really quick how to do it and then we're going to play we're going to install and play an emulator and we're going to install the whitelist hack and test it out on some games so let's check it out so the first thing i've done is tested four games that i know for sure will not work on the PlayStation TV. These are locked out. And I, I'm also testing some games that did not work on the, the previous whitelist hack, just to see if this one's any better. Um, but I, I have my doubts on those. And then ignore the Danganronpa icon. It was just something I was playing recently. It has no relevance to this video. So the four games are Neptunia Rebirth 1, Denki Kibunku, Fighting Climax, Metal Gear Solid HD, and Uncharted Golden Abyss. These four games are locked out of the PlayStation TV. All right, so this is super simple. First thing you want to do, I mean, make sure your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV is connected to your internet. And then you'll just go to your web browser. And then in your browser, you'll navigate to this web address, henkaku.xyz, that's H-E-N-K-A-K-U dot X-Y-Z. And then from here, you'll just click the install button and then it'll run through a bunch of um, I guess the install process. Uh, if you get any error messages, they say to just try again. Uh, if your Vita locks up, just shut it down with a hard, you know, shut down by holding down the power button and, and try again. But I didn't have any problems here, so I, I am doing this on my PlayStation TV. It does work on the PlayStation Vita as well. All right, so now that that is installed, we can load it up. All right, so from this screen, we will press select to start the FTP server. Um, now you'll see your IP address is displayed in the message pop-up, and also it'll give you a, a port number that's not typically used with FTPs. Uh, so the, the port number is 1337. Um, and then you'll just put that in. So you go to your computer and you will open up your FTP software or you can use the FTP command shell. It's just a little bit more complicated. I'm using FileZilla, it's, a, it's free and uh, I just have had really good results with it. So, um, so you just put in your IP address and the port number and then connect. Now you'll want to, once you're connected, you'll want to navigate to the UX0 folder. That's the root folder for your memory card. And then you just simply upload the .vpk files that you want. Uh, if you don't have any VPK files, I've got some links in the description below to show you where you can download those. Um, there's, you know, you can get a .vpk for installing the whitelist hack or emulators. Today I'm just going to be installing the whitelist hack and then the Super Nintendo emulator. So I've uploaded those two. And then I'm going to make a folder to put the ROMs in. And I'll just upload a few Super Nintendo ROMs. All right, so now that those are all on there, we can just close this FTP software and then go back to our PlayStation TV or PlayStation Vita. And then we'll just navigate to our UX0 folder where we uploaded the .vpk files. And as you can see, uh, here's our Super Nintendo folder where I put the ROMs. And here's our VPK files. So we'll just run and install these. First, the whitelist hack and then we'll install the Super Nintendo emulator. All right, once we're done with that, we can just exit out and go back to our home screen. And as you can see, we have the whitelist hack and the Super Nintendo emulator files right here. So first thing I'm gonna do is run the whitelist hack. All right, and all it does is just, when it's done, it just closes back out. And then we will try out the Super Nintendo emulator. All right, so we'll go through the menus here and I'm gonna change it to full screen with a four by three ratio, cause that's just what I like. And let's try out a game, let's pick Earthbound. All right, so as you can see, this is running just fine on the PlayStation TV. 
and uh, it, it's, I'm sure, much more useful on a PlayStation Vita to be able to have the emulators and stuff on the go. So. All right, cool. All right, so let's just test out the whitelist hack now. Uh, I'm gonna test out the four games that I installed before that failed. Uh, first, let's try out Neptunia Rebirth 1. This is one that I know for sure I had problems with with the old whitelist hack, so we'll just see if it, this one will fix it. Okay, this game still doesn't work. All right, let's test out Uncharted. I know this game worked uh, with the whitelist hack last time I tried it, so this should work again. All right, Uncharted is, is booting in, and it's working. All right, let's try uh, Dengeki Bunko. I know for sure this one wasn't working with the whitelist hack last time. We'll just check it again and make sure. Okay, it does not work. Um, let's try Metal Gear Solid HD. This one I did not get to test with the whitelist hack last time, so I'm curious to see if this one will work. All right, it looks like Metal Gear Solid HD Collection works. All right, so that is it. It's super easy to install. One of the easiest hacks to install so far that I've done on the PlayStation Vita. Um, but yeah, check it out if you're interested. It works on the latest version, 3.60, although I would imagine that Sony will be updating probably any day or week now uh, because that seems to be what they do. They, the only updates we get, the only system updates we get on the PlayStation Vita anymore are to either remove features or to lock us out from unlocking our Vitas. Um, we, they never seem to add any new features anymore, but what do you, I mean, what do you expect? Sony has kind of dropped support on the Vita. But thanks to third-party developers, we're still getting plenty of Vita love. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.